So if we do an affine transformation to our remote sensing image, the image could end up looking like a parallelogram or a rectangle or, or can have a different shape than what it started out with. But once again, um, the sides will be parallel to each other. Sides that were previously parallel will still be parallel. But, um, but basically every pixel is going to be moved by some distance. So in this example here, we can see that the um, regular grid of pixels that are set up with the open circles are not the same as the resampled set of pixels that are set, that are shown with the with the black dots here. We can see that in this case, the um, what would be a square edge with the um, open circles is going to be kind of rotated or tilted with the closed circles. But we have to do this in order to get all the pixels in the um, in the correct location. But as far as what value those pixels get, we can do that in a number of different ways. One way that we can do that is by nearest neighbor, where we just take the, um, the old pixel closest to the new pixel and we just give it that value. And then we can also do it by either bilinear interpolation or by cubic, or sometimes it's just called cubic interpolation. And I'll show examples of all three of these. So this would be an example of the, um, of the nearest neighbor. So the original image is shown as this dotted as these dotted pixels here, and the corrected image after the georectification, after the geometric correction, is shown by these dark or these um, solid lines here. So this darker gray pixel that was located here is not located here, and whatever value this pixel had would now be as assigned to this value, just because it's the nearest neighbor, it's the closest in distance, the center of this grid cell is the closest in distance to the center of this grid cell. This is the easiest and quickest sort of um, resampling of pixels to do, but it also creates the most artifacts. And this shows just how those movements would actually take place. In this example here, this one value associated with this pixel is assigned to both of these pixels, and this, the, the value of this original pixel is not assigned to any of the new pixels. So you can see why sometimes artifacts might be, um, might be incorporated if we do it this way. Um, there is another method called bilinear, where we don't just take the nearest pixel, but we take the four nearest pixels, and um, the values associated with the um, original image are averaged, or in some other way, assigned to this new pixel here. So all four of the dark gray pixel values are reassigned to this light gray pixel value in the corrected image. And we can see here, this is how it would work, right? We would just take our new pixel here, which is represented by this black dot, we would find the four closest pixels from the um, original image, and then we would take all four of those values and um, take an average or some sort of number associated with them to assign to this new pixel here. So bilinear interpolation, instead of just looking at the closest one, this one here, it's looking at four that are, that are nearby and um, accounting for all of those. And then the cubic interpolation just takes that further. It might take a four by four window and um, from the original image, and just um, take all of those values and maybe take an average and assign that value to just this one pixel of the corrected image. And that would be the same for, for every single one of the um, pixels in that, uh, in that image that's going through this sort of geometric correction. And the way that that would look here, right, is the same sort of idea. It would just be all of the pixels within a certain distance. Um, their values are considered when the value of this new pixel, this black dot here, is being assigned. So this would be an example of a cubic interpolation. It, um, it's going to give the smoothest looking results because it's accounting for the largest neighborhood around that pixel in order to determine what the value of that, uh, of that new pixel location should be. And this just shows an example here of some of the sorts of artifacts we can have associated with nearest neighbor, where it looks like this, uh, this path here, a road is offset but that's just a, a function of how these um, pixels were assigned values of brightness. And we can see that if we use a cubic convolution where we're looking at a bigger neighborhood around here, then the um, algorithm is better able to work out that this is where the um, pathway is and it's not actually being offset at a location here or here. And we can even see some of the, um, some of the artifacts being carried out further than that in, in, in these directions over here. So cubic convolution accounts for larger neighborhoods and generally results in a, um, in a much more continuous image that doesn't have these uh, artifacts associated with it.